What's up guys, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at metal roof retrofits. I've got Jeff Hawk from Sheffield Metals and Tim Lane from Top Hat. Tim knows all about this topic. Tim, thank you so much for being here. We're excited to talk with you about this. Well, let's hope I know all about it. We'll, we'll do our best. Yes, absolutely. So tell me, let's start first, ground level. What is a metal roof retrofit and kind of how does that differ from traditional roof replacement? You said it already. In, in, a, in a retrofit, we're not, we're not doing any real demolition of the existing uh, structure. And, and most, most often that's going to be an existing metal panel system. There are two, di- two different retrofits, uh, an overlay or a slope conversion. Okay, so slope conversion being you're building up a flat roof to have a new metal roof. Sure. You, you see uh, school systems back in the 60s, 70s, 80s were all pretty much flat roofs, right, with internal drains. And the idea with, with water control is to get water off of buildings. Those types of structures with interior drains are pretty much always going to leak in time. So the idea of a slope conversion was to make a, 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 a sloped truss frame, typically built in the field, um, and, and put a pitch on it. A lot of times the pitch the pitch can be pretty steep, right? The metal buildings can be a half 12, 112, where a slope conversion give, gives a designer a little more play and can make it a, a 12 and 12 if they want. So slope conversions are neat in that not only do you now take a flat roof and, and, and pitch it and get the water off the roof, but you can also change it and make it uh, have some architectural flexibility in it. Yeah, so I think that's super good information to know, talking about the two different types of retrofits. For the purposes of this video, I think we should focus on metal roof overlays. Um, so rather than tearing off an existing roof, you're building on top of that existing roof uh, with the, the new structure. So let's, let's jump into benefits. You know, why would someone do that in the first place? Why would they overlay a new metal roof on an existing roof? When you do a, a roof tear off, I mean, so, so you're looking at the roof, obviously it's got problems. When you do a tear off, you can open up a couple cans of worms. One would be a lot of these older roofs are uh, exposed fastener roofs. And that type of panel creates what's called a, uh, a diaphragm action. It's designed to be part of the structure. So you'll find someone will make, will make a decision to do that tear off and, and tear that exposed fastener roof off and, and come back and put a, uh, a standing seam on, which is made to expand and contract. So now you, you've created a structural problem. So tearing off, uh, you, you can get in trouble with the tear off. That's one of them, creating a structural issue. Uh, you could have, I think, useful and, and maybe valuable insulation underneath that roof that can now become disturbed and maybe create another issue, or you could be on a facility that's fully occupation, where I've, I've, I've been involved with projects in the past where they painted planes inside buildings, ran post office and recreation centers. During a retrofit progress, those operations all stayed, they, they stayed in operation, they stayed operational. I completely agree about not opening the contents of the building up to the elements is not only are you taking that exposure away from the inside of the building, you're also kind of giving yourself a little bit of a buffer when it comes to your schedule, right? Because if you open up a building that is functional, like you said, you're going to, your time frame of getting that roof back on is going to be increased pretty dramatically. One of the other things I see too, at least in, in the technical side of the world I live in is engineering codes change, right? So uplift values change. So if you have a set purlin spacing and you need to increase that purlin spacing to meet higher uplift values, you could add the subframing in with um, the different retrofit systems to give you a, a closer clip spacing in, in areas that you need it, you know, your eaves and your corners and things like that, without probably a substantially lesser cost than tearing off, adding purlins, sure. you know, going back and then having to replace the roof system. So, you know, time and, and material wise, it's a, you can upgrade your building at a lesser cost of what it would be, you know, traditionally. Being able to work on top of a structure where there's a where a, a platform is already there, landing material, 
being able to move around on it when there's something pretty solid underneath your feet is a big deal. So I think from a workman's comp standpoint, it, it's a big deal. When you do an overlay, there, there's other other good things that come in the in the play. Is that when you're when you set the frame and you 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 have an opportunity now where a void has been created between the old roof and the underside of the new roof. And those frame heights can be variable: two inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, and and that void that's been created can now, I think, economically and effectively find a way to add insulation to that. What is the installation like for a product like this? It's um, pretty much sticks that are that are punched out, that the punch outs clear the existing ribs of the of the of the, um, of the existing panel. Almost all, in all circumstances, a punch out frame like that is it's screwed into the existing purlins. So so that's that's pretty much always the case. And as Jeff pointed out, when we get into um, Zones two and three, where there are now uplift considerations, those are the areas where we would add what's called a deflection limiter, which is a component that runs typically in the in the corners. Let's say the E strut and maybe up to the to the second purlin up, maybe ten feet, and and then an intermediate frame that goes in between. So, so the framing is all done from the top side, generally speaking. Then that platform's created to put a new roof on. At that point, it's it's no different than than putting a roof on a on a new on a new building. Other than you're standing on the old roof, which is which is the neat part of it, right? It's not open. Now, when it comes to you know retrofits, the even though the deck might be closed by the uh, existing roof panels, in the eyes of engineering, you're still spanning purlins with the new framing. So, how does that impact your panel selection? you're still going to have to have the proper testing for the assembly that you're going over. So once the retrofit system goes on top of the existing purlins, it's, you know, going to be another purlin application. So for uplift test, it's going to be an ASTM E1592 test. So you're going to need a structural panel. Uh, more than likely, it's not going to be a snap lock. It's going to be somewhere along the lines of a two inch mechanical or better. Okay. One of the things that I, I see, with, with contractors don't have a lot of experience in overlays is they're, they're, they're not looking at a, at a high quality structural panel. What they'll find is when they, when they start to look at the impact that has on the frame that needs to be designed underneath it, by using a, an inexpensive panel, the frame price can double quickly because they need to add intermediate frames and deflection with them. So yeah, always, always, Look at a good quality structural panel. It'll 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 save lots of money with the framing underneath. Well, and as you brought up earlier too, Tim, you know a lot of open framing projects are at a lower slope. So, you know, not only do you have to have a panel that can you know meet the testing for uplift requirements, you have to have a panel that's going to meet the slope requirements of your project as well. Sure. You know, a lot of panels aren't designed to go down below a two twelve. So. You know, you have not only uplifts, but you have the uh, the slope and the water penetration to take, you know, into consideration for it as well. When it comes to, to Sheffield, you know, how does Sheffield support, you know, a retrofit project? You know, we support it, you know, by trying to, you know, have the panel systems and the engineering and the testing to, you know, be able to support those assemblies. Um, you know, when the projects do come up, you know, we want to be able to provide a tested system. We want to be able to offer the warranties that go along with it because, you know, there's definitely a place for it in the market. All right, well, if you have any more questions about metal roof overlays, buildups, the whole retrofit system, you can check out Tim with Top Hat. Comment down below if you have any other questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.